find the biggest, longest girl in the uh, can you, is there any way that you can ask Chris what his uh, rank is, what his rank was in the Marines for, as a pilot? I don't know what's going on, but this is Kevin's second time in Texas in like the last week. I never get a chance to say this, but um, Kevin didn't ask me to, but uh, make sure uh, you subscribe to our YouTube page, our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, because with the team that we have, there's, there's uh, uh, shorts and videos going out constantly. And you know, I go, I'm able to go with Kevin everywhere he travels, and these shorts come up, and I'm like, that's awesome. I don't remember him saying that, you know? <laughs> and then I'll save it to my computer so I can watch it later. So yeah, vlog on, uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, everybody that's watching, and uh, 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 we appreciate that. So how many appreciate all the content that Kevin puts out all the time, amen? <laughs> all right. All right, let me give you a few uh, places where we're coming here soon. This week, starting tomorrow, uh, excuse me, starting this Friday, Kevin will be in Santa Maria, California. We're doing a conference there. And then a week uh, from... I'm not sure what day it is. What today? What's it? No, what's the day? Wednesday. A week from this Monday, we're going to be flying to Europe, and uh, we're going to do a wonderful conference there. We're going to be in Zurich, Switzerland, then Cape Town, South Africa, and then uh, near Frankfurt, Germany. So uh, if you're watching online and you're anywhere in that area, please come. There's still room. We'd love to see you over there in that part of the world. Then in uh, November, we're going to be in Puerto Rico doing an outreach there in Puerto Rico. Yep. And then you may have heard of this place. We're doing a one-nighter in Texarkana, Texas. So, <laughs> you guys and your Texas stuff, I tell you. And then uh, St. Petersburg, Florida is our first meeting of the new year. I can't believe we're talking about 2024 already, but the first meeting of 2024 will be in St. Petersburg, Florida. And uh, we're trying uh, with all that we can, uh, just for you Texans, uh, Kevin's trying to get to Dallas area three times next year. So <clears throat> we're working on that. We're working on that. Every time, I'm telling you, all the time it happens. And Kevin will tell you, because I have to clear everything with him. Every time Kevin points me in a direction where he feels like the Lord told him to go, the enemy immediately tries to stop it. And so we, you know, we've had to reroute and route. That's why if some people watching online, you're like, how come he never comes there? Well, we may have been trying to get there for five years. I don't know. But there's a lot of places that Kevin and Kathy have on their heart to go. We're about ready to book Oklahoma City. That'll be a new one for next year. And so uh, just it's going to be a great time next year. And so Kevin and Kathy are not slowing down. Amen. And so we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. And Kevin really has a heart for Texas, of course. So we want to keep coming back here and being part of the family. Thank you. See a lot of familiar faces here. How many, how many students are here? I don't want to steal my thunder. Wow. Thank you. All these wonderful students. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part. And we're so happy to be here for this is one nighter. Thank you for making that sacrifice to be here. Amen. Amen. We, we're going to receive an offering now. And uh, like Kevin and Kathy like to say, if you're not rolling, in the ro rolling around the floor hilariously ready to give, like I am so ready to give, I'm going to burst out laughing. That's how we give here. Amen. That's how we give in Warrior Notes. And listen, I don't mean to uh, pull on your heartstring in any way whatsoever. But la I, I think it was last week. I'm getting my time confused here a little bit. But I think we, last week we did the one-nighters. Did anybody watch those? And, he, and I just, uh, because uh, Kevin came to our church in North Carolina, we, we knew some of the single moms that came up. And I don't know if you watched the Concord one, but they were weeping and weeping. And then the after effect uh, of hearing from those uh, single moms, it, it radically changed their life. That offering, that offering... For the single moms, they were the, 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 one of the single moms was going this way. It completely rerouted them. And now their, their life is completely turned around. Amen? So I said that to say that, that this is a no, this is a no uh, uh, aggressive offering. We're going to you know, wait until everybody can give $1,000. That will never be the way this is. I, you, you can see firsthand where this offering goes. Amen? 
So thank you for being a part. If you want to give online, there should be a number on your screen. But thank you, everybody. I think you got an envelope if you want to give that way. But thank you for participating. Thank you for being with us. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to sow into the kingdom. Lord, to sow into, into, into what you're doing around the world. Lord, we know that lives are being touched every single day, hour by hour. Lives are being touched by this ministry, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for that, Lord. And I thank you that tonight will be no different, Lord. And everybody will leave here, Lord, radically touched by you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pastor Mike. Amen. Wow. It's good to be in Texas. I know you guys are hungry for God because uh, you guys show up always. We're so excited that you guys are here. We're so excited to be with you. You know, there's something special about the Warrior Notes family in Texas. And uh, you guys are literally taking ground every day. So thank you guys for being here tonight. Thank you for being a part of everything that you do from fellowships to um, the community outreaches, to the students, to the partners. We know all of you guys are out there doing it every day, spreading the gospel. So give yourself a big hand for what God is doing through you. Amen? Now, I know we've got um, so many partners, so many students that are behind Kevin and Kathy. And just let me take a moment and say thank you guys, because it's, it's the partners that are the ones that are the fuel in this engine, okay? Kevin and Kathy got the engines, but the fuel is what's getting us all over the world. So just know this, for everybody that partners, when you see Kevin preaching the gospel in South Africa and all over the world and in Puerto Rico, we are, and he is an extension of you guys. So he, you guys are sending them out, sending Warrior Nuts out all over the world. So thank you guys for being behind Kevin and Kathy. You're making a massive, massive difference. So thank you so much, and thank you for being with us tonight. And I know we just had a graduation, so do we have any grads here tonight? Would you guys stand up real quick? Go ahead and stand up real quick. Let's see some grads. Yay. All right. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Okay, sit down. You had enough. That's all you get. That was a humble test. I won't tell you what your score was. No, I'm just kidding. Listen, we are just blown away. Literally blown away. We're knocking at the door of 37,000 students. And it's just been unbelievable what God has done. And so thank you to all you students that have been a part of this. And for everybody that graduated with your bachelor's, you saw we've got master's courses starting to come out. And for everybody that got their associates or higher, I want to encourage you that now you can begin your internship time. And so many of you, I know you've been trying to find out, but listen, it's go time for internships. And we want to see you in fellowships. We want to see you reaching the homeless. We want to see you preaching the gospel. We want to see you reaching kids. So make sure whether you're online or here tonight that you're getting involved in an internship because the gospel is not a couch gospel. The gospel is a go gospel, okay? <laughs> and so you got to let it go. So let's jump in and let's do this. Amen? Okay. A few other things because we're finding so many people that it's your first time getting to know Kevin and Kathy and your first time getting to be a part of Warrior Notes, whether you're here or you're online. So I just want to share this vision with you guys because we want to keep this out in the forefront. And the vision is this, that we equip the body and we win the lost. Okay. Everything else might be great tools, but the primary goal is that we win the loss and we equip the body because so many people have such incredible calls and talents and giftings in their life that it's time that we activate those and we get you set into the place in which God has called you to be in, right? That's what it's time for. So in case you don't know it, let me just go through a few things with you because this is Kevin and Kathy's heart is that we begin to invest in your children. And 2024, Kevin and Kathy are going after the kids like no other time. They have been filming, they've been writing, they've been doing so much behind the scenes. We don't even know how they do it, but somehow they take 24 hours and they turn it into 48. And sometimes even more than that. 
but they're using this as a way to really, really get out there and reach the kids and reach our teens with the gospel. So many of you know this, but we have homeschooling out. We have first grade, second grade, third grade, and we're working on fourth grade right now. And of course, we're going as fast as we can we to create a homeschool curriculum that has the identity of Jesus Christ in every page. And let me tell you, yeah, you give that a clap. To have the gospel in math and in phonics takes a calling, okay? It takes a calling. But you'll find that God is literally in every component of it. And so it's been amazing to see how this is coming along. And so for all those that are homeschooling, and I know Texas, we got some homeschool families in here, that it's, this is the best of the best, and we're going as fast as we can to get away all the way through 12th grade. And then from there, we're working on, we have it set up, where teenagers, when you're 13, you can enroll in Warrior Oaks School Ministry and you can begin to earn your associate's or your bachelor's degree. We're doing this so kids can parallel high school and college at the same time, okay? It's a wonderful program. We've had many kids, one of my own daughters even have just done this, where she graduated from high school early at 17 and then already had enough credits for her associate's degree. And we have kids that are doing this all over the world right now. So if you're a mom and dad, if you're a grandparent, you look in your kids' eyes and you know they've got a call of God on their life. Well, you've got to begin to help invest. You've got to invest in that. You can't just hope it works out. You have to do it on purpose, right? You parents know this. And so the goal is, is that your kids can get to their master's and their doctorate in their early 20s, and they could be pastoring, they can be starting a business, they can be doing all kinds of great things from God, but we don't want them to have to do this and get and be hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars in debt, and in their 30s and 40s. We want them to be debt free and in their 20s and fulfilling the call of God on their life, okay? So that's, that's the vision. So please help us get the word out because it is time to see God move in our teens. It's time to see God move in our lives. How many are with me on that? Yeah. Amen? All right. Let's give it to Pastor Chris. All right. How many is fired up tonight? Okay, I'm not sure this is on. Is anybody fired up tonight? All right. There we go. All right. Is there any soul winners in the house tonight? All right. That's what I want to talk to you right now about, right now. There is a special family here, the Smith family, and their kids are somewhere around here. Where's Scott at? Okay, stand up, buddy. I, I, this is an example. Okay, and of course the girls are back there volunteering. This family, one day I said, listen, just keep standing, buddy. I said, I want you to... Uh, witness to the lost. I want you to tell people about Jesus. I said, if you don't even have anything, you can make cards. And on the cards, you can put, you are loved. You are valued. You, you are safe. God loves you. Jesus loves you. He has a plan for your life. There's books written about you in heaven because Kevin and Kathy taught us that. These guys, first of all, you guys inspire me, number one. But number two, they were at their bus stop, okay? At the bus stop with a little table and a, a, uh, a box of oranges and this wa bottle of water. The kids were coming off the bus, okay? And they would give them a card that said, Jesus loves you or you are valued, you are loved, an orange and a water. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It is amazing, amen. So I just wanna say you guys inspire me, you really do. Thank you, Warriors, and we call him Warrior Scott. But listen, could you imagine that kid, right, at school all day, saying you're fat, you're ugly, all these mean things that kids say. They get off the bus thinking that, you know what, no one loves me, and God, if you're real, send me a sign, something. And they get off the bus, and there's a, a, a card that says you are valued. Isn't that powerful? Listen, something so simple. Man, there is, whew, there's a fire. I don't know what's going to happen tonight. My legs are getting tingly. All right, so, but listen, we can all do something. That's the point. You know, one of the things we do at our Warrior Fellowship, and I love to talk about it, is we hold up signs, and we start out with just free money and free water and free hot dogs, but now we've kind of gathered our more and more in our arsenal. We're giving out free money, free popcorn, free cotton candy, and we literally stand in the front of our church with signs up from 11 to 1, 
people drive by. We've had people drive by in Maserati cars, all decked out with gold. And they came and they said, I don't need money. I don't need groceries. I just need prayer. And I was like, wow, here's someone that has everything, but they still need God and they still need prayer. Listen, Kevin and Kathy taught us this. The, the, uh, when you are witnessing to someone, this is really, I'm telling you, it's really strong up here. When you are witnessing to somebody, you are witnessing to the image of God. And you heard this, and I'm going to keep saying it, and I borrow this from Kevin because I don't steal anymore. But the, yes, amen. But the currency in heaven is souls. Amen. Well, yeah, you heard that. Amen. There's a harvest that we've got to get in. Amen. If you've known Kevin and Kathy long enough, you know they are about people and they are about the harvest. And all these warriors are being raised up right now. All these warrior fellowships, all these students. I want to tell you, with just the people in this room, we could take G Texas for Jesus Christ. I'm telling you. There's enough fire, enough soul winners in this room that we could take Texas for Jesus. Amen? So I just want to encourage you, whatever it is, and I want you to begin to really listen to your kids because these kids said, you know what? I, we need oranges. We need water. If your kids begin to tell you something, listen, Mom, I had this idea. Dad, I have this idea. You better listen because I want to tell you, the kids are getting it. The kids are watching Kevin. The kids are watching Kathy, and they are taking it in, and they're saying, I want to do something with the gospel. I want to preach the gospel. I want to share the gospel. So listen, if your kids are saying it, you better jump on, parents, because you don't want to be passed by, I'm telling you. All right, another thing I want to talk about, this three-volume set is Holy Fire. Yes. How many have started this Holy Fire? Okay, is it fire or not? All right, so it's a three-volume set. I just, I just finished, I got these when they first came out. I just finished the first book called In His Image. And let me tell you why I just finished the first book. Because I would read a couple of pages and then I had to put the book down and I said, what in the world I just read? And I had to go get on my face and pray and begin to speak in tongues. And I, I'm telling you, the more and more I started reading that book, I'm like, Jesus, stir up that fire inside me, that fire, the impurity, and get all that junk out of my life. I want to tell you, I'm almost done. Sorry. You know, it says to Timothy, fan into the flame, right? There's a flame. Sometimes you got to keep fanning it. And this book, it'll fan it really, really well. I'm telling you. So you've got to get this. We don't have any more over there, but you can still get it online. Our website, you can get it. And let me read the titles to you. The first one is In His Image, which I just finished, and it is fire. I'm just going to tell you, straight up fire. The second one is A Friend of God, which I just started, and here I go again, right? I'm reading a couple pages. I'm like, all right, Lord, I thought I knew something, you know, whatever. So I go, and I'm praying, Lord, I re I'm repenting. Lord, Lord, you know, forgive me for thinking this way all these years. And then, like, okay, start the next chapter. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go pray again. But it's all about the friend of God. It's all about the love of God. And I want to tell you, and Kevin's been saying this and sharing it, the next move of God is going to be the love of the Father. Amen? I'm telling you, there is, there is prodigals out there that they've burn, been burned by church and all this stuff, but they don't know the love of the Father. The next move of God is going to be love of the Father, so we've got to get it. We've got to learn the love of the Father. We've got to get it and still inside of us. So when that harvest comes in, we got to share the love of God. We got to teach them the love of God. And I'm telling you, it's going to be powerful and it's going to be amazing. And the third book, which I have not started, is The Kingdom of God, but I can't wait. But I want to tell you, you've got to get this book. And I've, I've been with Kevin and Kathy for a while, and they're not about selling books. But if there's one book you need in your library, I'm telling you, it's this one right here. Amen? All right. And we also have music. Uh, Pennsylvania Monroeville just came out. We have music. We still have music over there. I'm telling you, all this stuff is fire. We have Austin, Texas. And then we also have our instrumentals. Sometimes we don't have, but we do have them tonight, instrumentals. This one, I want to tell you, this one's special. This one, I don't know what it is, but as soon as the flute, whatever flute that is, that flute's in heaven. Begins, that flute begins to play. I'm like, man, I'm in the presence of God. I'm ready to pray. I'm ready to go after God, cast out devils. Amen. So whatever you, whatever you do, come visit the book table. God is on the move. Love you guys. And I'm going to give it to Pastor Ryan. You know, I don't know, I don't know if you know this, but it took, uh, we got to hold this little gadget up here. 
It took Kevin seven years to write those, those three books. They're books number 69, 70, and 71. Out of everything that uh, Kevin's ever wrote, the devil fought him on that first book more than anything else. And because he fought him so hard in the book, he wrote two more. And so that's why we got Holy Fire. And so listen, uh, you, guys, you guys bought them all that we have here. But like uh, Chris said, uh, you can certainly get them online. So thank you for doing that. I want to introduce a, a wonderful friend of our ministry who travels with us, him and his wife now. And he pastors in Longview. And Pastor Jan, why don't you come up here and share, buddy? Thank you very much. I feel extremely underdressed. I, uh, I usually wear a jacket, and I went off and left them at the house today for the whole weekend. Hallelujah! <laughs> Um, I am Pastor Jan Simmons. I pastor in Longview, Texas, which is, is East Texas. We've been there for 21 years, and uh, we are officially a Warrior Fellowship Church. When the Lord spoke to my heart um, almost three years ago, and he told us to, to uh, be a part of Kevin Zadai Warrior Notes Ministries, and I had no idea where I was going, but I saw him on Sid Roth, and it so hit me in my heart. I, I couldn't, I spent the whole week listening to his videos, just going back through and going through what Kevin was saying to us. And it was so fresh and new. I hadn't heard anything like it for almost 20 years. And I'm telling you, I said, I've got to be a part of this. I heard the Holy Spirit say, you need to get under this man. Well, as far as I knew, that was be a part of the school. So I signed up for the school, not knowing where it was headed. And the Lord moved in such a direction. I just received my master's degree um, in Orlando, in, uh, in Dalton. And they, they have placed me as the director of the alumni. I'm over the alumni. And I am just... I cannot tell you how humbled I am. I, I, I went to the great faith school that, Brother, the, that Kevin says, Brother Hagen uh, taught, and uh, I'm telling you, uh, Rama fired me up. I can't say anything else, I'll get in trouble. But I will say, Kevin carries a mantle. And it's time that we bring the glory back. Amen. It's time that we get the fire back in the house. It's time that we get out of that dry riverbed and we start ministering in the things and the gifts of the Spirit. It's time that we see Jesus for who He really is, not who He was, but who He is today. And one of the things that I have found about Warrior Notes Ministries and, and, and the team, and the, 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 the whole team is so beautiful. They're so fun. They're so funny. I mean, it's just, I'm having the time of my life at 66 years old. I never thought it would be, I never thought it would happen. I was at a place where I was ready to say, you know what? I don't know if we're ever going to get back to where we were. And God had a plan. God had a plan. And so... Here's what I want to do for you as alumni. I want to, to be out there to be able to help you, to answer questions, to love on you when we go to these meetings, to find you. Please come up and hug my neck. That's why I'm here. Please come up and introduce yourself. I'll be glad to give you my phone number, whatever you want to do. I've got a list. I'm going to make plans. I've got plans to call all of you as time allows. But I want you to understand we so appreciate the hard work that it took for you to get that degree. Many of you are students. Keep pressing on. Let me tell you, when it came down to me graduating, it was getting close to, to my graduating, it was like everything out of hell came against me. And I would find myself at, at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, trying to stay caught up, trying to catch in those things. And I'd fall asleep, and I'd just rewind it and watch it again. I was like, no, devil, you are not going to steal this from me. And I'm going to tell you, it takes that kind of persistence, because this is the truth. We're not just trying to get a piece of paper. 
we're changing lives. Amen. And it always starts with us first. Is that the truth? You can't, you can't effectively preach something until you've lived it. And I'm telling you, that's where the confidence comes in. You'll begin to kick, you'll begin to kick devil butt. And I am telling you, I'm telling you, when you get that going, there is no return. The power of God will move in you like you've never seen it before. That's where we're headed. That's what we want to do. That's what Christ is doing in the body of Christ right now. How many of you agree you're the remnant? Come on. How many of you agree? How many of you agree you're the five wise virgins? I'm telling you, the fire of God is so burning in the, in the remnant right now. I hear, I hear these things going along when, when we visit. I see your posts on Facebook. I'm telling you, we're taking territory from the enemy. I'll also tell you this. He ain't happy. And that's good. Is that right? You may face some extra warfare, but press on. Press on, press in. You're going to see what Jesus has determined for this day and for this hour. So rise up in victory and let's go for the gold. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is that it? And I don't need that. Okay. Okay, so I, that, I don't think we need to do anything else. Let's just close. That was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. Just remember, we're not happy until the devil's not happy. So we got to make him. We got to make him upset. So I'm going to make him upset right now. Uh, this is Mr. Potato Head and his family. And um, I understand our government hates Dr. Seuss and Mr. Potato Head. So Mr. Potato Head is traveling with us right now. And for the next year, every session, you're going to hear about it. So Mr. Potato Head, he is a man. And he be all of that. And this is Mrs. Potato Head. And he calls her Hot Potato. All right, so we got, we got Mr. Potato Head, Mrs. Potato Head. There they are right there, look. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to stretch all over all the world. Everybody, all these evil people. They're very bad people. Very evil. Did I mention evil? Okay, so we hate fake, but this is, this is the way it is. Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head got together, and they had the tater tot. So, so this is the family. So you have male and female, and then you have a tater tot. And it's that easy. Don't make it any harder. Okay? So the whole idea is to get together, be hot potatoes to each other, and have tater tots. <laughs> Amen? Okay, so is there any questions? Is there anything hard about that? <laughs> Never thought that I'd see a government that's mad about Mr. Rogers and Mr. Potato Head and Dr. Seuss. you got to be kidding me. So they identify as male and female. They're fine with it. I've talked to them about it. <laughs> and like I said, like I said, honestly, um, if you want, um, the doctor for $125 will, will help you to determine. But if you want to do the home <laughs> examination, it's free. <laughs> and everything else is confusion. I understand that this, this stuff is real to people that are encountering this, but it is confusion because God did make male and female and he saw that it was good. And then there's tater tots and they're really good too, so. Okay, all right, so we, we've gotten past that. And if you're getting tired of this, you still got a whole year to go. Because I'm gonna make sure everybody understands that Genesis uh, chapter one and two is, is just as plain as you can get. It's just too bad that Mr. Uh, Mr. Potato Head had to step up and travel with us. <laughs> okay, so um, I have a couple of special uh, people here um, that I want to introduce. Um, as you know, we felt that, that the going into next year, we should uh, go the track toward 
uh, helping the parents, helping single parents, and then helping the children. So, um, you know, next year you'll see a lot of emphasis on the children. And as you've heard, that we have gotten um, approved to go the whole way to our doctorate now as an approved uh, university that is accredited. Okay, so we also got approved that at 13, children can start to take the courses so that when they get their, their high school diploma, um, a lot of our teenagers, as soon as they get their high school diploma, they immediately graduate with their, their associate degree. And um, Caesar, Caesar's back there. Caesar is 14 years old and he's already at his bachelor level. But he hasn't got his high school diploma yet because he's only 14. So he will graduate from high school and then he will immediately get his bachelor degree. So we're making this available. We're going to start doing um, a ground school for flight training. So I will be teaching ground school you know, the whole way through from private the whole way up. And I'll be getting the kids ready for their FAA exams, both oral and written. And then we'll, um, we'll route you in the right direction to get your kids into flight school. Um, there's 13,000 seats emptied every year at the airlines now or more that'll never be filled as far as they know. So you got a guaranteed job as a child uh, that starts now, uh, 13, 14, 15, you can solo at 16, I believe. And then, um, like I just got my ATP rating a couple weeks ago and I already qualified to work for an airline. Wow. And I can get a job right now as, at an airline flying you around, which I'm not gonna do, so just see you. Know. <laughs> so um, kids, kids can get a job, make six figures, and you can stay home. Yes. Don't think about that. Okay, all right. So what a deal, huh? All right, so this week I just want to introduce Captain Carol. Carol, Carol is uh, flying with me. Come on, Carol. I, you don't have to talk if you don't want to, Captain Carol. You don't have to talk. She's going to wave. Okay, now Carol has been um, in the aviation uh, industry for a long time. You, how many know Captain Lou? Remember Captain Lou? Well, Captain Lou... Uh, actually hired you, right? When they were, they were like in the airline business a long time. So anyway, I got uh, Captain Carol flying this week with me, and then I've got um, Lieutenant Colonel Chris Colzer. Come on up here, Chris. He is with Victory Aviation. He's the one that flies the military jet with me. So we we'll, we will be flying to Santa Maria tomorrow. Now, he, he was an F-18 pilot, he was in the Marines, and um, he, he flew off a ship and flew, uh, flew in the Gulf War, but um, I asked him to share because his, his uh, aviation school and, and his, the, what he, it's called Victory Aviation Training, that's where I got my, my training to fly the military jet, which is now rated as an experimental jet because I'm a civilian. But he is military, so he is one of the, uh, the instructors that, that got me ready for my check ride and that I passed. And um, so, Chris, I just want you to share a little bit about what you do and how we met. And then uh, um, he's going to be working with us. He's agreed to work with us in the next year. Um, so he flew the fighter jet up here to meet uh, today. And then we're going to actually fly it to California tomorrow, me and him. And Carol's going to fly a uh, warrior jet with, uh, with our staff uh, out to Santa Maria. Chris, thanks for coming. I just really appreciate you, sure. brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Um, let me start by saying I wasn't born in Texas, I'm not a Texan, but I did spend seven years here. I was here for a year in high school, right? Seven years, biblical number for perfection, so that's a good number. And then six years in, uh, in Fort Worth. And so when y'all stand up the Republic of Texas again and kick all the commie federales out, I've, I've got two native-born Texans, both of my kids, so I'm hoping you're going to let me back in at the border. I, I'm actually counting on that, because I live in Minnesota right now, which is a hotbed of socialism. But I grew up in Montana, so I'm doing everything I can. So the last event, we had a chance to talk a little bit about what we do and what we do with Kevin with flying the airplanes. And I'm just going to condense it down into what I hope for everybody is, is, a, um, is a takeaway, a, a concise takeaway that you can apply as a high achiever or success mindset for anything you do, for 
for, we, we talk about flying, work, family, and life, because the things you learn in the cockpit and have learned in the cockpit, you can apply throughout your lives, not just flying an airplane, a jet, any kind of aircraft, but through flying, work, family, and life. And we call it the victory mindset. Our company is Victory Flight Training. And it consists of vision, accountability, and normalizing excellence. The first step of that is vision. You always want to know that preferable future that we're going to. We're talking about sharing the gospel, winning souls for Christ here. That's the vision that we are all about here. For Kevin and I, tomorrow our vision, our preferable future is the two of us and that jet end up in California. <laughs> and so every you have small visions, daily visions, and you have big God-sized visions. And so you got to you got to define your vision, and you also have to align the team for the vision, which is what Warrior Notes is doing right here with everybody here. And then you guys take it out as a team of teams. This team goes out in a thousand other teams and takes that vision into the streets. So you define the vision, you commit to the vision. The second step is accountability. We all know as humans, we don't like accountability, right? And that is biblical. You need to repent. Mark 1.15, you got to repent and believe in the gospel. Repentance is the first step, and that's our challenge, being that instrument of God to help people see that and be used by Him so that people can repent and believe in the gospel. So accountability is tough, whether it's repentance. It took me until age 38 before the Lord worked my heart to humble me that I would repent and believe in the gospel, my wife and myself at the same time. And that applies to a mission. When Kevin and I fly... We get done, we talk, we debrief, he tells me what he thinks about what I did and vice versa. We need to have willing accountability. The willingness to be accountability is the critical piece. You can force it on your kids with the wooden spoon or you can try to bait them to your direction with a gummy bear or something. But once, they, when, once you get them to the point where they are willing to accept accountability, for my kids and for me, that's the key. So vision, willing accountability, and finally, normalizing excellence. And this comes from Southwest Airlines, which Kevin talks about a lot. Not just excellence once or twice, but habitual long-term excellence. That's why we're in the book, knowing the word, being able to convey the word, and, uh, and doing things better and better every single day. So if you in in incorporate those three things, everything you do, gospel, work, family, life, flying, vision, accountability, normalizing excellence, we as a team will do great work for the kingdom. And that's... That's the, the concise version. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the whole idea is that the Lord had asked me uh, to do these things that are outside the box. He said, step outside the box at Warrior Notes. And then he said, burn the box. So, so um, you know, we, we will be known next year for having Mr. Potato Head traveling with us. And we will also be known as um, having ground school and flight school with a, with a military jet for the kids. And so we're going you know, to be going to Santa Maria. We're going to be, uh, we picked and chose um, a group of kids and their parents to come out. Um, Chris and I are going to brief them, put them through a ground school. We're going to take them around the airplane. And then we're going to uh, do a demonstration and do an air show for them at the airport out there. And then when we land, they're going to get to come up and um, see the cockpit, and then they're going to help me clean the airplane. <laughs> um, so because I'm a bug, I'm a bug killer. I, I, uh, I seem to get all the flocks of bugs, and they're all over the airplane. So anyway, we're teaching the kids everything that Chris talked about. We we uh, built, we made manuals for them that are uh, uh, the kids level, and uh, so they get through the checklist with us. We explain to them accountability, everything that Chris just talked about. This is what I feel like we're supposed to be doing with our kids. And I feel like this is what the church should be doing. And we should be also taking care of single parents. And so a lot of these kids that come out, they're chosen because they're, they have, they have a, you know, a rough time right now. So we try to get single parents with, and bring their kids out and help them. And, and that's why we bring the simulators as well. And we teach the kids on Saturday. So I, I just wanted to share all this with you, and I'm so thankful that I'm not normal. <laughs> and, and I'm just uh, fulfilling everybody's prophecy when they told me when I was growing up that I was not normal, and I, I just want to, just so happy I could confirm that. But, but there's no footprints sometimes where God tells you to go. There's no footprints because no one's ever been there before. And you got to remember that, that maybe you were chosen to take a path that's not, uh, that's, that you're going to make. You might be the first person to do this. 
And the bottom line is there's a lot of us hurting and we're, we're suffering in silence. And there's not, not a segue or a way to connect with people like there used to be. Um, let's, just, let's just face it. We have to be there for people. And we need people to be there for us. And the bottom line is if there's a disconnect, it's, it's something that Jesus actually came against by being crucified, walking this earth and being crucified, and then being raised from the dead and being seated at the right hand of the Father, all of that brought us, we're supposed to have brought us back together, not just to each other, but also to God. We're supposed to be reconciled. So um, a lot of times the dis disconnect comes down here because we don't realize what Jesus Christ did for us. So I'm just going to talk to you tonight, um, the subject that I chose, um, and, and um, I will be teaching on multiple subjects this weekend, but um, tonight, the, the message that the Lord gave me um, on my three minutes that I had off this week um, is humility, the fast track to spiritual advancement. And um, the, 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 the fastest way up is down. And this, this is why you take the offering before you teach messages like this. You know, I'm just kidding. Because no one wants to talk about certain subjects because it's not popular and, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's not sensational. But the thing of it is, is the bottom line is, is that I like to hang around people that, that don't go to church, but they're real people. I mean, I have more fun with people that, that you wouldn't think you'd have fun with, but I have fun with them because they, at least they're real. And I'd rather somebody just tell me the truth than believe a lie and continue to live like that. How many of you want to grow spiritually? Okay, I know that. That's, re that's rhetorical, right? The only thing is, is that Jesus, when he came, he literally humbled himself. You know, do you realize that it says that he considered being equal with God as not even being grasped, but became a servant? So he, he made his status as though it, it wasn't even gra uh, be able to be grasped. He, he said, call me the son of man. Don't call me the son of God. Even this, the evil spirits. He said, shut up. They would say, we know who you are, the son of God. He talked about being the son of man because he wanted to identify with us. Right? Okay, but he was a humble servant. So he wasn't really seeking a title because he already had a title. But he laid it aside so that he could relate to us. And that's what the bottom line, if you read my first book, the reason I wrote that is because when I met him, he didn't talk down to me. He talked straight across to me because he had raised me with him. Paul says we're raised with him. We were buried with him and we're raised with him, right? It says that, right? Okay, so the process of dying guarantees resurrection, but if you don't die, you, there is no resurrection. You have to die to have resurrection. Okay, so the process, I believe, for some people is skipped for many reasons. But here, here's, the, here's the, the idea of humility as far as like uh, what Jesus preached. I mean, if you want to bring him into it, you know. Um, humility is presented as a practice like of, of meekness where you, you're in obedience because you're submissive. It's, it's, uh, it's knowing where you are and what you need and discerning that enough to be smart, enough to ask questions and if a person is more experienced than you, has gray hair, you probably should just shut up and listen. You know, and that's what I was told in college. If you meet a gray hair person, don't talk. Because you already know everything you know. But you don't know everything they know. Okay, so Jesus spoke on behalf of the Father, right? We know that. He, he, he didn't speak on his own. He spoke according to what the, the Father was saying, right? He said, I only speak what my father's saying. I only do the works of my father. He didn't claim to do any of these things. When they said, oh, good teacher. Remember the rich young ruler? Oh, good teacher. He goes, there's no one good except God himself. Remember he said that? 
So what was he doing? He was trying to show that he was a servant as well while he was on the earth. He laid aside his deity. That goes over well. But he did. He laid it aside according to Scripture. Okay, so you all, you all know this, but I want to go through this because people that are humble, they are submissive to authority. So you notice there's a lot of rebellion. There's a lot of rebellion, and then you want to defund the police. Which you think you, think you have a problem now. You have no idea what they're holding back until they're gone. And it's just like authority. It's just like when you have um, chaos. It's because something was holding it back and then it's gone. And then chaos, I guarantee you, when the church is removed, you got about an hour. Within an hour, it's, it's going to break loose on this earth. Okay, so people with humility also not only discern God as being in authority and they don't rebel against him, but they also, you'll notice when people are humble, they also honor each other. They also take care of each other. And that's why Paul said, you know, uh, discern other people as well and their needs and consider yourself them better than yourself. Do you remember that? That's been, that was the last time that was preached. It was like in, I think on the Isle of Patmos. <laughs> in 95 AD, you know? No, no. You've got to discern that people are valuable to God. And you've got to discern that if you would do something for someone else and suffer, for, suffer instead of them, that God is not going to let that go. He's going to reward you, but we've got to honor each other. Okay, so humility is not only treating God right, but it's also treating each other right, right? So we, we put each other's needs before our own. Look at that. It's like some, full, some, some new doctrine. Look at <laughs> We sacrifice. We, these words are missing out of our vocabulary. We sacrifice. We can do without to help someone else. We make somebody else happy. This is the kind of thing that brings miracles. This is, what, this is what brings joy. This is what brings the Spirit of God in fullness in your life. But it's not sensational. It won't get you on TV. It won't get you a book deal. You have to be willing to just do the simple things that Jesus displayed. And he's, he's saying, you go forth and you do likewise. And even greater things than these will you do. You'll do the same things that I'm doing, but greater things, he said. We haven't seen the greater things yet. We haven't seen even the things that he did yet. Have we? I mean, some of us, right? So you've got to be fully convinced that God is going to pay you back. So you don't sow into somebody else and then expect them to give back to you. Why would you limit God that way? You do an act of kindness. You do something that God says to do in humility so that someone else is better off than you are so that God will intervene in your life and take care of you. Okay, so what does it say about Cornelius in the book of Acts? He's praying and an angel appears to him and he's involved with Paul and all the things that are going on in the New Testament with Paul, Saul being... Uh, converted, and the angel says this to Cornelius. Cornelius wasn't an apostle or a prophet or a pastor or a teacher. He wasn't even an expert. He was a pert. He hadn't even become a pert yet, an expert yet. He was a pert. He's about this big. <laughs> an angel appears to him and says what? Your prayers and your alms or your giving have come up as a, a sweet aroma unto the Lord. Okay, so the angels knew that Cornelius had done all these things. The angel knew that he had prayed and that he had given. So what are you worried about? Your angels knows what you did, which means that God knows what you did, right? And Cornelius was chosen to do this huge thing and go to Saul, right? 
unless they took it out of the Bible. Did they take it out of the Bible already? It's still there? Okay, so they, this is, you, you have to get this mentality that you don't have to be, have a status or a title. Amen. Okay, because Stephen didn't have a title. Stephen was serving tables. He wasn't an apostle or prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, but they stoned him. Paul, Saul, had him stoned. Why? Because when he spoke, the Spirit of God was so strong on him that they gritted their teeth. The Pharisees gritted their teeth and they killed him to shut him up. Yeah. But he was a table server. What about all the women, it says, that supported Jesus? Jesus didn't take offerings. It says that women gave into his ministry. Right. So they, they can't preach, but they can get, they'll, you know, the preacher will take his money, take her, their money. And, uh, and a woman can carry baby Jesus for nine months. That's fine, but they, she can't preach. Amen. But she can carry the Son of God, change, change his diapers or whatever they had back then. So a woman, a woman you know, and in my, in my denomination, they, they didn't allow them to be, to be ministers in the United States, but they'll send them overseas to uh, go on among the Amazon where they were cannibals. So you, you'll, they'll send the women over in harm's way. They're allowed to do that. But you can't be a minister in the United States. So a woman can carry Jesus, but she can't be a minister. So the, the women can give to Jesus' ministry. It says they give to Jesus' ministry in the book of Acts. And in the Gospels, too, as well. Yes. So it's all right to take your money, women, but you, you know, forget it if you're going to... See what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, so you cannot eliminate people just because they're male or female or because they, they don't have a status or they do have a status. Um, you can't even eliminate people that don't have money. Amen. Because James says, you know, you... You, you know, you rich people, you want to sit in the front row. I mean, James, man, you, can you imagine him being your pastor? You'd be crying every week, licking your wounds, man. <laughs> Have you ever read the, read the book of James? You ought to try it before they take it out of the Bible, you know. <laughs> James says, you talk about your faith. He says, I want you to show me your faith. He said, all you rich people, you want to sit in the front row and have your preeminence, you know, get recognized. He says, may you perish with your riches. No, and it's not, it's not wrong to prosper. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that that's, that's not what we, our motivation should be. So why should not a poor person be used of God? It's the same with, with everything else. Why, why wouldn't a child be used of God? Children can be used of God. Mr. Potato Head was used tonight. <laughs> He has never once doubted his masculinity. <laughs> I mean, he's got, he's got Miss Potato Head calls him a hot potato every night, you know? Okay, so the way that we identify with each other is based on how we feel about each other, but it's also how we feel about ourselves. And the reason we don't feel right about ourselves is because we don't discern who Jesus is. Okay, so humility is this very quick pathway. It's, it's the short button. It's the fast button. It's the, it's the way to get there really quick. It's the, app, it's the app button. You just hit it, bam, you're there. Okay, this is a shortcut, humility. So when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, He will lift you up in due season, right? Okay, so you have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You don't want to pray that God would humble you. Because it's going to be a smoking hole somewhere. It's going to be a mess. So you, you don't want that. You want to humble yourself under God's mighty hand. What does it say? Humble yourself under God's mighty hand. Do it in a controlled environment. Do it with not, where it's not a public thing and you know the, the video doesn't get out of what you had to go through. I'm telling you, you could do this the easy way or the hard way. But the hard way is public and it's not pretty. And you don't want, you don't want that. You want your personal relationship with God to be enough. Okay, so the, the humility uh, that, that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, always be humble and gentle. 
Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. That's Ephesians 4 2. Okay, uh, Philippians 2 3 says, Don't be selfish, don't try to impress others. Be humble thinking of others as better than yourselves. See, you're not going to hear this stuff anymore because we're all in a survival mode right now, most of us. we got to get out of that. We're not just surviving down here. We're hot potatoes. Okay, I'll get you to laugh. Okay, so Proverbs 11.2 says, Pride leads to disgrace. But humility comes with wisdom. James 4.10, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. I've already said that one. Romans 12.16 says, uh, live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Just trimming the fat off. <laughs> the sword is sharp of the spirit. First Peter 3, 3 through 4. I'm just bringing these goodies but oldies back, you know? Ones that never preached anymore. If you need me to come to your mega church, I can turn it into a small Bible study in just one week. <laughs> Oh, this one is a good one. It's a, it's a, fa it's a fave, not. This is, this is one that will get everybody kind of grumbly. But it says, first, Peter, man, he's just, man, I'll tell you what, Peter changed, didn't he? Peter changed after the Lord uh, left. First, first Peter 3, verses 3 through 4 says, don't be concerned about your outward beauty. <laughs> okay. Outward beauty of fancy hairstyles. Do you realize that was two cans of hairspray right there? Okay. Y'all look great. Fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious to God. I'm going to read that again. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so most of us, what we're going through is because we don't understand the image of God that we were made in. We were made in the image of God. In Genesis 126, it's still there. I checked it. I checked it out. We were, we were made in the image of God. Image of God, the image of God is what we were made in. Right? Genesis 126. So when we fell, it wasn't God's fault, but now we were kicked out of the perfection. And we've had to deal with what God said would come upon us. So God's intention was for us to be perfect. But we're in a fallen world now. But when we were born again of the Spirit, it says that the old has passed away. Amen. you got to remember this. That 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this. When you compare this with Genesis 1.26, that God made man in His image, and you realize that your spirit is made new and is a new creation, which means the old has passed away and everything has become new. But that, that creation that you became takes you back in your relationship with God. And it restores your spirit back. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24 clearly says that there are three parts to man. So there's spirit, soul, and body, Paul says in, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 
23 and 24 and 25. Now, this is very important because in the original language, it's three different words that mean three different things. So you can't like exchange them body and soul or soul and spirit. They're all different. And if you look up the meaning in the text, then you'll find out that your soul is actually your mind, your will and your emotions. It's it's the psychological part of you. It's where you get the words. Uh, it's suke, which is for the word for psychological uh, part of you. Okay, the spirit part of you, of course, is the spirit. The, the, the spiritual part of you is your spirit, and that's understood. And then you got your body, which is your earth suit. So, in order to stay in this realm, you have to have your earth suit. So, if you lose your body, you're present with the Lord. To be separate from the body is to be present with the Lord. Your soul attaches your spirit to your body and gives you a, an accentuated experience. But it's not always reliable because it's just supposed to add to the experience of being here. But it's not redeemed. The soul is not redeemed. It says in Romans 12, verse 2 and 3, it talks about the renewing of your mind, your soul. It, it's about the transformation that has to happen in your soul. Your spirit's been transformed, but your soul needs to be renewed by the word of God, it says. That's Romans 12, two and three, okay? So now Paul says, and this is a big beehive, but Paul says, listen, concerning the body, he said, I'm an apostle, I preach the gospel. He said, after preaching Christ, if I do not discipline my body, I checked, it's still there in the Bible. He said, if I do not discipline my body, the word there is beat it black and blue until it obeys. Wow. All right, if he does not do that, what does it say happens? He said, I could be a castaway, thrown, essentially the word is spiritual junk heap. He could be a castaway and lose out because his body ruled him and he disqualified himself. Wow. Okay, so you can be anointed all you want but your body could take you where you don't want to go. Okay, your soul can make you feel and believe in, and, and, do, and, and do something in the flesh because you think it's reality when it's just a thought or it's a feeling. You know, when people give you the eye roll, it might be that a bug got in their eye, <laughs> but you're in a tailspin. You're in a spin, it's about to become an inverted flat spin, which is not recoverable in most cases. So why are you gonna put you in that over a flea? In other words, a thought, a thought. You don't know why people are acting that way. You don't, it doesn't matter, does it? But see, if we're not settled in that we're new creations by the Spirit of God, then we can't put the body in place and we can't allow the, the soul, the mind, to be renewed by the Word of God. So we have really bad guidance. It's unreliable. It's giving you false data. Come on now. Your mind is giving you information that it, and your emotions are giving you information. You just need some vitamin C. You need to sleep. You need some rest. You need to throw the macaroni and cheese away. Maybe drink some green juice or something. In other words, there are certain, and I, I, I had one pastor friend, he's watching, so I gotta be careful, but he said, I don't know what it is, but when I drink a double espresso, I can feel the anointing come on me. That's what he said. I go, brother, your dog will feel the anointing if he drinks a double espresso. Because it just brings the anointing on. I go, he's watching, I gotta behave, okay. So when I would, pre I would preach at his church, he'd have it ready for me. And I'm telling you, it was just like Holy Communion to him. He had that little thing and he's like, he's got little tools and everything. He's like cranking it up and ring, you know what? And he just pours it in and he just, he presents it to me like it's the Holy Communion cup, you know? And all I want to do is pray, you know? 
And boy, did I come alive. <laughs> but see, at the same time, as soon as that rocket ride is over, you're coming down. So you're going to need a parachute. You're going to need an extraction. You're going to have to call for a helicopter to come in and pick you up because you're going to have to walk home. So you're going straight up. You're going to come straight down. You cannot live life this way. You've got to realize that you're a spiritual being that lives in a body and has a soul. And that the soul, you have to teach it to conform to the truth which is written. It becomes spoken from your heart, but then your mind is renewed when it hears it. What happens is you begin to realize your value because your spirit is allowed to rule and reign. So what's, what's ruling and reigning in your life right now? Is it your dog? Is it your checkbook? Um, is it your crazy relatives? What is it that's ruling? Is your checkbook screaming at you louder than God's talking to you? I mean, is your circumstances, your body, I mean, you, you, you are fighting a disease. God has got to intervene. We don't want any help after what we've just gone through. I don't need your help. I need God to help me. Keep, keep your little things away from me. So everybody's got a shot for everything, you know. I'm good. And I'm just going to take my zinc tablet and my vitamins. I'm going I'm I'm to walk on out. I'm going to walk on by giving it the hand. You know, in other words, there has to come a time where God intervenes in your life and it's a supernatural event, but you let him do that. But what you do is you stay in a place and an attitude where you can receive. Okay, so the, the mind needs to be renewed. Your spirit is already as good as it gets, according to scripture. So check it out. Second Corinthians chapter five or 17 and check it out. What God says about your experience with the spirit of God and being born again that Jesus talked about in John chapter three to Nicodemus. You know, and he didn't have the half the testosterone that this guy had because he came to at Jesus at night because he's a Pharisee and he didn't want anybody to know. At least Mr. Potato Head will stand up here and 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 identify as a male. And he doesn't have a hybrid cell in him either. He's full 100% Idaho potato, you know? <laughs> Amen. Okay. You got to get you guys to laugh. You guys are too serious. Okay. So in Proverbs 22, 4, it says, True humility and the fear of the Lord lead to riches. Can you believe that? That prosperity stuff. You know what it says in the original language? In Hebrew? Same thing. As it says in English. It says, true humility and the fear of the Lord will lead to riches, honor, and long life. So you want to take that out of the Bible too? I mean, your Bible is going to end up being like seven pages. And most of it's going to be maps and indexes. You know, you know what, are you going to live off the, the indexes and the maps? Okay. Oh man, I'm getting, I'm getting toasted here. Okay, so... 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, Then if my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Imagine that. It's a come to that. We gotta, we, everything else has failed, so we're going to humble ourselves and pray. Do you realize how many evil people would disappear if, we, if the church would just start praying and humble themselves? The, it says that the evil people will, will disappear. They will fade. Like, like the flowers in the sun. You should see all the scriptures that talk about that. That's not our job. You let God do that. But the church needs to be the church. We need to be the righteous presence of God on the earth. Amen. We've been made that way by the blood of Jesus. If you humble yourselves and pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. This is being addressed to God's people. The New Testament 
is being addressed to the church. Every author that wrote a letter in the New Testament is talking to the church. Paul was writing to the Corinthian church. He was talking to the Ephesians, the Colossians, uh, the Philippians. The book of Malachi was talking to the Italians, you know, <laughs> Malachi, Malachi. He's talking to the church. Jesus visited John on the Alpatmos. He said, write these letters to the seven churches, right? He said, repent. You're lukewarm. What did he, all the things he said. If you have ears to hear, hear what the spirits say. You have to say that to the church? Jesus said, return to your first love. You've left me to return to your... He's saying that to the New Testament church. He's talking to the church. He's not talking to the world. These books, these letters were written to us. So, so if the Lord thinks we're lukewarm, then maybe we just ought to listen to Him and own it. Let's, let's just submit to the audit. If we're not hot, then we need to talk to the tater tot. We need to talk to the hot potatoes. In other words, take a stand and just be who you are. Jesus Christ has established the church. That's His body on the earth. It says that. We're His body. He's the head. What is so hard about that? It doesn't sound like we really have the say-so. The head does. I mean, I know, I know coming before they came down here, Mr. Potato Head didn't look in the mirror and says, does this, does this make me look fat? <laughs> Maybe I should wear something else, you know? He's a potato. <laughs> oh boy, okay. All right, it's only eight o'clock. Chick-fil-A stays open until nine, so we're good. You guys are good, you'll get your, you'll get your meal and everything. Just don't eat the one, one cent hamburgers, okay? You gotta be kidding me. Your dog won't even eat that one cent hamburger. Okay, going on. Oh, this is a really good one. This is a really good one. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 and 30 says this, take my yoke upon you. Remember that oldie but goodie? <laughs> When's the last time you heard this being preached? The Lord says, take my yoke upon, let me teach you. So the Lord wants to teach us. Okay, but when, he, but he says, I am humble. It says, because I am humble and gentle in heart. The Lord is humble and gentle in heart. So uh, he's not going to whip you, beat you. He's going to teach you, right? Learn of me. He says, learn of me. Find rest for your souls. How many need rest for your souls? I do. I need rest. I need rest in my soul. Well, let's just go ahead and let that yoke come upon us and let's learn of him. Stop trying. Start doing. Have a plan. Pray it out and have a plan. I'm telling you, there, there, was a, 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 there was a teacher at school. You, if I named him, you would know him. I mean, everybody in this room would know who it is. But he was like a nobody at the time. He was handing out the books to the students at school. Didn't even have a job yet. And now he's a world-known minister. But he would just come and hand out the books to the students the first day of class. And he said, and then the next year, he's teaching one of my classes that I'm in. I'm like, boy. Duly noted in the captain's log, you know. <laughs> wow, he served and he was promoted. Can you imagine that? He didn't push himself. He didn't pay to play. And this is what happened. He grew in the stature and admonition of the Lord, just like Jesus did. He grew. I, so I watched him. The, he had a healing class. There was, 100, there was 130 of us students in his first class. 30 people got healed in his class. He never touched them. He just taught the healing scriptures for a whole semester so that us ministers could learn how to teach about healing, allowing God to do a miracle in your life, just, just building up your faith. He didn't breathe on us, didn't lay hands on us. He didn't take an offering. 
He just taught us. And by the time that he left, when he left, there was hundreds of people in each class getting healed because the school grew. But this is what he told us. He's, he, he would go to the piano, and that didn't take any lessons, and he could play the piano when the anointing came upon him. He would feel the anointing come upon him, and he could play. And he would sing, and he would get these songs, and so Brother Hagin would call him up. And he wouldn't even know what he was going to play or say, before. but he, as soon as he got up there, and he got prideful about it. So in class, he told us, he said, I got to start to thinking that this was me. And I forgot that this whole thing was happening because it was a miracle. It was a gift from heaven, an impartation that was not me. And so can you believe the Lord did this? He took the gift away for three weeks. He couldn't sing and he couldn't play the piano. And the Lord left him to himself until he was ready to talk to the Lord about it. And then the Lord restored him. Okay, so whatever happened to this kind of teaching, where, we're, where we have correction from God, and we get back in line and, re and realize that we're all gifts. Salvation is a gift. We, we can't earn it. And, and our lives are not our own now. Oh boy, that's a big one. When we gave our lives to the Lord, it says that our lives now are not our own. We, we've been bought with a price, right? It says that? Okay, so we have to glorify God in our it says in our bodies, right? Okay. All right, so are you ready to put that yoke upon you and realize your full potential? Because God will allow you to realize the potential that's there if you humble yourself. If you're going to think it's you, I don't call that submitting to the yoke. You're going to be dragging the Lord around. And I don't think he wants that. Last time I checked, he was in charge. Okay. Mm. Oh boy, here's another oldie but goodie. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life. Oh, wait a minute. It's not by faith. It's not just a gift. It says if you are wise and understand God's ways, this is James 3.13. Prove it by living an honorable life and doing good works with humility that comes from wisdom. Moving on. Proverbs 18.12 says, Haughtiness goes before destruction. Humility precedes honor. Humility comes before honor. Nobody's dancing. Nobody's excited. <laughs> You, I mean, you're not getting it because it's, it, I'm prophesying to you. This is, what, this is how it works. Humility. You know, it's, it's, humility precedes or comes before honor. Okay. How many of you can handle, if, if, I, if I don't open my Bible and I just quote all these scriptures to you, or can you handle that? Because what I want to do is I want to show you, if you go to the book of Job, don't do it. You can go do it when you get home. But after every chapter, it talks about all the terrible things that happened to Job. But what, you, what he didn't know was that there was a conversation going on where God was bragging about his man Job as being the righteous and the most, the, the most um, he, he said he was the most righteous man on the earth. He's my man Job. And... The devil went and did all those terrible things to him. God didn't do any of those things to him. My point is this, after every paragraph, after every chapter, after the devil did all these things, he lost his family, he lost his everything, okay? It says at the, at the bottom of every chapter, it says in all these things, come on students, in all these things Job did not sin by blaming the Lord. That's the whole point of Job. Right. Read it and weep. Or put it in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> the truth is showing you what's really going on. So you're wondering, like, why are you in such warfare? Did you ever think that maybe God has bragged about you? 
do you think, I'm, I'm just telling you this because what I experienced in heaven was Jesus Christ. He changed my life. But this is the thing about Jesus. He believed in me more than I believed in myself. For that 45 minutes that he talked with me, I realized that I totally didn't get it. I totally didn't get it. I was so embarrassed because I, was, I, was, I, had, I had degrees in theology and I threw them away. Because Paul said that the only thing now after living all these li this life that he lived, he said, I've come to this conclusion to know him and the power of the resurrection. He said to, to live as Christ, to die as gain. This is what the apostle, after all that he went through, all the encounters, he was caught up into heaven. And he encountered all these things. He, his, his bottom line was, was, I'm nothing and he's everything. And he was fine with that. So I believe that culture has pushed us to be overachievers. And in that overachieving, we've underachieved. The, the reason why is, is that spiritually we're lacking, but we shouldn't be because it's been provided for us. However, according to these scriptures I've shown you, and that is page two of 16 more pages of notes, 16 more pages of scripture, 16 more pages. I am even getting into the hard stuff that's going to make you cry. It's going to make you crawl up here and repent. There are scriptures that will show you that you're really in doubt and unbelief and some of you in rebellion. You're pushing back against God. You're resisting him. And the reason why you are is you've been so hurt. Well, stand in line. WD-1 didn't make it, or two, or three. WD-39 did not make it, but WD-40 did. <laughs> First 39 didn't displace water. Water displacement, number one, did not work. So would you have that can in your house if the guy had given up? Okay, so there's eight more pages of scriptures just on self -deny, denying yourself, self-denial. Eight pages of scripture that talk about denying yourself. And you probably have heard in a sermon maybe one of those pages in your whole life. Okay, so we're unbalanced. Just think if you took ground school for six years and you never flew... You can teach the class, but can you fly? So you can't just study. You got to get out there and you got you to give God a chance to use you by praying for the sick. Let's just, let's just start with feeding the poor. Let's just feed people that are hungry. Let's not just blame everybody for everything that's happening in our lives. And let's not blame God. Let's turn ourselves in and let's have an attitude of humility. Okay, so here, here's, here's where it gets good because that's my introduction. All right, so we're good. We're at 820. 820. Me and Carol, we, oh, we flew six hours today. At least, right? I think six hours. You think I'm going to quit at 830? You gotta be kidding! I, we went to Florida, we went to North Carolina, and then we came here. And, and tomorrow, me and Chris gotta fly a fighter jet for like six hours, five hours, if the winds are behaving. So you can't just like expect somebody to settle for an hour sermon Amen. after all the, the effort that it takes to get here, and you know you know, to have a thousand people show up on a short notice like this. 
You guys are hungry. Okay, so this is how you change things. It's not, it's not spectacular. It's supernatural, but it's not spectacular. What you do is you literally make your life available for God to do something with it. You literally just make yourself available. It does, you don't even have to leave your house. Now, if the angels knew that Cornelius was praying for people and for giving, he was not forgiving, giving. He was giving alms, which alms had to do with giving to the poor, if you look it up. So alms giving was the, the offerings that were given to the poor. So today, today, how many of you, I've heard it until I just have a headache. They say, don't give to the poor, give to me because you'll get my anointing. Because yeah. <laughs> the poor you'll always have among you. Has anybody ever heard that or is it just me? Are you all afraid of these people? You can't admit it? Come on now. So, okay, so why would you want to give an offering to get my anointing? Can you walk for 40 years like I have? I don't think so. I can't walk like you have for 40 years. What I'm walking in is my relationship with God. Okay, so your anointing, your mantle, whatever you want, want that comes upon you based on Jesus Christ working with you, performing his ministry through you. That's what Paul said. It's as though God, Jesus, it says, Paul said, my ministry is this. It's as though God has borrowed my body and is doing his ministry through me. That's what Paul said. Your relationship with God is your ministry. Because the fruit from your relationship with God is for other people, is to help other people. So you want a supernatural event? Well, then be a Stephen, be a Cornelius, be the women that followed Jesus around. Made sure he had everything he needed. You all aren't getting it. No, 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 you're not. Think about, okay, can any of you name one of the 70? Okay, they went out and healed the sick before Jesus died on the cross. He gave him his name and he said, go forth and heal the sick, raise the dead. And he said, he said to cast out devils. They came back, right? They couldn't believe it. They said they actually obeyed us. So you know they didn't even believe. No, no, think about it. Can anybody name one of the 70? So there are no names. Okay, so the angel. This angel is so powerful. He puts one foot on the water and he puts one foot on the land in the book of Revelation. And he raises his hand and he swears by him who lives forever. What's his name? No name. <laughs> and so you've got to be an apostle. You've got to be a prophet. You gotta be kidding me. Why don't you just be a nonprofit? In other words, why don't you go into the marketplace and provide for a need? Let God give you an idea and, and form a business. What about providing a service for people? I need a, I need a, I need a, a massage right now on my neck. I pay people a lot of money to, to massage me. You have to let God speak to you and say, where are the needs? Where are the needs? Anticipating the needs. And you just provide a service. So I listened to 30, maybe 40 years of prophecies about the, the world ending in just a couple weeks. And I went on and on about this. I lost my hair. I'm like, you know, beans and rice. I don't even remember where I buried this stuff, you know. And I, I'm thinking, I'm going to put money in my backyard. No, no, not money. It's going to have to be gold. Oh, no, that's too expensive. Silver. Okay, so you do all these things, okay? 
This, you, this is, this, I'm not saying you don't do this, but what I'm saying is, what about just helping your neighbor? You want a supernatural event? Um, actually, admit you're wrong. Just, I mean, I know people, they've never been wrong. I, I know people, they've never been wrong. And you almost want to trip them, you know? <laughs> you know, you, you have to resist, like, hoping they mess up, you know? You have to pray all the time. Lord, forgive me. That perfect person. At what point do you just turn yourself in and say, Lord, I want a supernatural event in my life and I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to believe the best of everyone. I'm going to suffer for doing right. So why would you want my anointing when what's in this room is not even me? What, where, where did ministry come where it's this person's anointing, this gift, that gift? Whatever happened to the body of Christ getting together and agreeing is touching any one thing and it shall be done for them. Whatever happened to the prayers that Jesus told us to pray? If you even agree as touching any one thing, two or more, it'll be done for you. He said, wherever two or more gather in my name, I will be there in the midst of him. Well, I mean, I can... I mean, I can count. There's more than two here. So Jesus is here. Jesus is here. So why aren't we getting together and agreeing upon touching anything and it shall be done? I mean, what does Psalms 110 say? I mean, Kathy's going to tell me here in a second. But it talks about the rod. It talks about I shall place a rod in the midst of you. It's a, it's a rod of judgment to those who have not processed Jesus Christ right. But it's a rod of righteousness. But it's righteousness, the word righteousness is zedek in Hebrew, which also righteousness is, is, is just as strong. Righteousness is just as strong as justice. It's the same word. And so even my name, my last name is from zedek which means justice or righteousness. Okay, so if God places his rod in Psalms 110, it says he places his rod there, then what happens is, is something, everybody listening, right? Something from the other realm comes and, and, and rests among us. Okay, something supernatural from the other realm. This is happening all the time to you. You know, you read about it happening to Cornelius. But it's happening to you all the time. I mean, you need two or three angels to help you. In the days we live in, and, and based on how you drive, you need at least two or three. I mean, you guys are crazy here. I'm, ser I'm serious. I can't wait. Chris, I can't wait to get back to the airplane. Carol, the safest place, that's the safest place. I'm serious. I'll fly all day. Nothing. I park the airplane. I get in the car. And I have three near-death experiences on the way home. And it's only an eight-minute drive. I am convinced that Texans shouldn't be allowed to have pickup trucks. I don't know why. No. No, let me, let me explain. Let, let me explain. I have seen pickup trucks do things that I did not know were possible, and I guarantee that the maker manufacturer has not tested. I have seen things done with a pickup truck on the highway that I wouldn't do in a simulator or in a go-kart track. So when I see, when, I, when, I, when I'm driving in Texas and I see, I, see, uh, uh, I see a pickup truck coming up on me with a closure rate of about 130 miles an hour, I'd just rather just go head off to the side and not be involved with the YouTube video that's gonna be placed. <laughs> because I'm gonna be involved in something. And it's gonna involve something airborne. Okay, so God is trusting you with the supernatural, but the supernatural is really inside of you. 
God has, Jesus gave us the resurrection power. When you read Ephesians chapter 1, and, and I tell all the students, pray this prayer that's in Ephesians 7, 1, 17 through 23. Paul is pray, praying it for the Ephesians. You need to pray it for yourself every day. And Paul talks about the, the fact that that power that rose Jesus from the dead is dwelling within us. He's saying that the, the power that is dwelling in you will open your eyes. It's an exploding, it's a, in Greek it says it explodes. It's a, it's a blinding light within you, it says. It's the spirit, Paul calls it the spirit of revelation. That the eyes of your heart would be opened, right? And that you would know that what? The glorious inheritance in the saints and the hope to which you've been called. And what else? That power that rose Jesus from the dead. Those three things. If you pray that prayer, your eyes will start to see these things. Then from there, you will start to operate in the supernatural, but it's going to be when you go out and about. Out and about. When we all have this hope within us, when we all have this spirit of God in us, and we all agree as touching one thing, it shall be done for us. This is the plan that Paul said was hidden in times past, right? He said in Ephesians chapter one, he said, he said this plan was hidden in times past, but now it's been revealed through the church. The glorious mystery of the ages has now been revealed that through the church, God's glory would be revealed even to the spirits, the evil spirits, the principalities in the heavenly realms. It's speaking wisdom to them. What does he call it? Students, manifold wisdom, manyfold wisdom of God. Manyfold. So it's, it's something that's unfolded. It starts out small, but it's, it, the wisdom, it just keeps unfolding. It's so powerful through us, it says, that it judges the, the powers of the air, it says. So in these days we live in, it's no longer a mystery. So you have a bunch of Christian mystics. And they're still talking about the mysteries of God. And, and they're mysterious. mysterious. Paul, Paul in, in his day, 60 AD, he said that it's been revealed. So why is it hidden again? Well, buy my book, you know. See what they do? Buy your CD set and find out. No, no. I'll just read my Bible. In other words, the mystery is revealed through us, the church, right? Have I said anything wrong? Okay, this is all in the Bible, okay? Hum, being humble allows this to come forth. Being under the yoke of Jesus Christ, teaching us, allows us to learn His way. I believe in mentorship. I believe it's a fast track. I believe that submitting to someone else that's walking in it and to teach, and that person's not afraid for you to exceed them. Because Jesus said, you're going to do the same things I'm doing and even greater things than these because I go to the Father. He wasn't concerned. He wanted you to accomplish everything that He did on earth and even greater things because of the number of us Amen. in the quantity. So what I found is, is this, in the Christian cartel, everything's fine until you start doing better than them. And then they hire people to, to reverse engineer you. And then those people that are not even godly, they say, well, we gave up. You have no idea how many times this has happened. And it's like, well, I'll tell you what it is. It's just God. I remember the day when Jesus told me about warrior notes. I said, I can't do this. He says, you're perfect for the job. <laughs> you're perfect. I said, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be a minister. So he told me, be Captain Kevin. Can you be Captain Kevin and go around and talk about Jesus? I said, fine, I can do that. Chris, Chris flew F-18s. 
He taught me how to fly a fighter jet. Now he flies with me. He was my instructor. He sat in front. I sat in the back because I'm learning. Now I'm sitting up in the front and he's sitting in the back. <laughs> he's not bothered by that. Why? Because he succeeded. He actually was there when I was with the FAA and got my rating. He was actually there. It just happened that he was there too. He, he, he watched it, but see, his company, his aviation, um, his aviation school is what got me to the place where I could go and pass and fly my own fighter jet. Okay, that is what Jesus did for the disciples. That's what he did for the 70, but you don't know their names. Okay, that's what the 120 had. That's what the 5,000 had in the, first, in the church. It kept growing. Okay, I guarantee you they didn't argue about if Christians can have a devil or not, or if we should tithe or not tithe. Is tongues for today or not for today? Give not to give. Prosper not to prosper. Heal or not to be healed. They did not even think about those things because the power of God was doing all those things without them was doing it through them because they, they believed. But they didn't really participate mentally in it. How many of us would really be honest and say, we are mentally trying to wrap our mind around where we're at right now? Yeah. We're in the desert right now. This nation is in the desert. But it's good because Joshua and Caleb are among us. And Joshua and Caleb suffered 40 years for all those numbskulls. Think about it. Joshua and Caleb are the only ones that didn't fall in the desert. The next generation went in. Who led them in? Joshua. Wow. What I feel right now Espresso can't do. <laughs> so all of you in San Antonio, all of you all over the world, we got 10,000 people watching. Everyone here, everyone listening, for the next 30 years this video will play. All of you have a chance to allow God to intervene right now. It doesn't matter where you're at. I mean, I'm telling you, if you have a credit card in your pocket, if you have a cell phone, they, whoever they is, knows where you're at. I've never met they, but I guess they're really bad people. But they know where you're at right now. I guarantee you, your bank knows exactly where you're at. Okay, but you don't? Okay, but Jesus knows where you're at. Even if you don't know or realize who you are and what your purpose is, God has already written these things down. Okay, now listen to me. Listen to me. I am telling you this because I want you to go up and sit in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus like Paul talked about. Paul talked about it in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, and in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. He said, be seated with Christ. He said in, he said in Colossians, he said, set your affections on things above, not on earthly things, but where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Right? We're seated with Christ in the heavenly realms, far above all role and authority. Paul said that in the present tense. So while people are still looking at Jesus on the cross, He's not on the cross anymore. They're looking at the tomb. He's not in the tomb anymore. He's, be, he's we, I mean, if you really want to be scriptural, you should have a pendant that has a throne and that's where you're to be seated. Be seated. What, did Paul, what, did, what did Jesus say? You think this is sacrilegious. But Jesus said, the, those who overcome will sit with me on a throne. Right. Ruling victorious. Those who are victorious will sit with me on a throne. The devil fears this night when you start to realize that you're hooked up with the, the, the creator of the universe and the one who rules and reigns. 
So this is what I want you to all to say. I want you to all agree with this. I want you to honestly tell God right now that you don't blame Him for what the devil has done. Come on now, lip it up, lip it up. Do you need a cup of coffee first? Can you lip it up a little bit and say this with me? Let's say it. Lord, Lord I, don't blame you. I don't blame you. Make the devil pay. All right. Well, I feel better. Jesus said that he gives us power, which is the word authority, to trample on serpents and scorpions and power over all the enemy. Did he not say that in the book of Luke? Okay, is it still there? Even the nearly inspired version still has it in there. Okay, so if Jesus said he gives you power, which is authority over all the enemy, that you can trample on serpents and scorpions and have power or authority over all the enemy, well, what is left? Is there any name above in the name of Jesus? Does it say that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord? Receive your healing. Receive your healing right now. Listen, I'm not, I'm not leaving until you receive. I'm not leaving. I'm going to stand here and stare at you. And if I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. You have to receive from God. He's done so much for you. Okay. So, we have confessed that, that God has not done these things. We know that Jesus said, the thief comes. What says John 10.10? I checked it out. It's still there. John 10.10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But what does Jesus come to do? He comes to give life, and life more abundantly. Okay, well, life is good enough, right? But abundant life, do we really know what that means? I'll tell you what it means. Abundant life will do what you've seen in the last seven years. Seven years ago in October, October 6th, I was on TV. And that's where all of you met me. Most of you. Seven years ago. I just completed my 81st book. We have 37,000 students in four years. We have over 3,000 fellowships all over the world in just less than, than four years, uh, three years. I have, I have personally recorded 168 courses. I have only have like 10 more left to, to finish the doctorate. Okay, now listen to this. This is not normal. But did you ever think that he's doing this in my life for you? Yeah. To show you, to show you what is available. You know Captain Lou. Captain Lou trained me. Captain Lou doesn't know it, but when I gave my life to the Lord, I was told, you're not going to the Air Force Academy. Do not take that next year when you get your slot. You're not taking it. Just tell Senator Hines for Pennsylvania that you're not doing it. I went away to Bible school. I walked away from it all. But I remember before I went to college, I went to La Trobe, Pennsylvania, which was right by my house, and the Blue Angels were performing in the A4s. And I remember the two opposing solos coming at each other, number one and number two, I believe. And I was in tears because I knew I was giving that all up. 
okay, now listen to me. I went and I did what God told me to do. While I was at Southwest Airlines, a new first officer was flying with a captain I knew at Southwest Airlines. I was just serving them coffee. And he introduced me, he goes, you know, this is, uh, you know, so-and-so, I don't want to mention his name, but um, he said, yeah, he was with the Blue Angels. And now he's, you know, he's flying, he's flying for Southwest. He's retired, Navy. I said, well, wh which aircraft did you fly? He goes, the A-4. I go, in 1981, were you, or 1980, were you at La Trobe when you performed? He goes, yeah, I was not the number one solo. Now, what are the chances of that? That guy is on my airplane now. And we became good friends. Okay, then Lou, when I met Lou and all this happened, I go, I don't know what to do with all this. He goes, well, do you, he says, my sole goal, this is what he said, Lou said, my sole goal is to make you a captain in the Phenom 300. He says, are you game? And I said, yeah. He said, you're gonna have to do this, this, and this for the next two years. You're gonna have to fly this much with me. You're gonna have to do this. And he said, and I will make you a captain. So I started flying with him. We had already gotten the airplane. Couldn't fly it, bought it, but couldn't fly it. <laughs> now listen to this. Then he surprised me. We were going for a one-nighter in La Trobe, Pennsylvania. We landed at the airport and he presented me with my first officer rating in the Phenom. And we took a picture right at the spot where I stood and watched the Blue Angels perform. Now think about that. I have so many stories like that. Where it always, it comes right back around. And God doesn't forget a thing. Amen? I used to watch videos of this man. I learned how to fly the airplane by watching YouTube videos with this man right here. I learned how to do the walk around the aircraft I learned how to fly the airplane by watching videos, and I had not met him. And now I'm flying with him. He's not in the, he's not in the computer anymore. He's, he's in the, the car. Okay, are you, are you following me? See, it, your Christianity should be about manifestation too. It shouldn't just be dreams and dreams and ground school and studying and hoping Sometimes it, it has to break through. The power that it takes to break through is the same authority that Jesus gave us to trample on serpents and scorpions. If God is not keeping you from your dreams, then who is? <laughs> yeah, the other guy. I remember the day when I woke up in Phoenix, Arizona, in my house, and Kathy left for the first service at the church, and then I, I always go to the second service, and she goes to the first service, and she saves me a seat, and um, this is back when we first got married. And so I, I flew, I would fly six days. I would fly, um, I would fly Monday through Saturday because that's all the FAA would allow me to fly at my job. So seventh day was off. And so I would sleep in a little bit and then go to the service. And we had two cars, but just don't worry about it because we weren't ministers. We had two cars and we paid for them, okay? It wasn't fun <laughs> offerings. We actually had a nice house too, can you imagine that? We, we, we worked for it. <laughs> okay, so. I fell back asleep and when I woke up, I was like in one of those things where I, I couldn't tell if I was in a dream, one of those, and I looked up and I, the house rumbled and shook and the Lord said, humble yourself under my mighty hand and I will lift you up in due season. And I looked up and there was a giant hand right above me. And the power, 
of that day is still present here in this room tonight. I started to see that God wants us to submit to Him so that He can take us further than we can go ourselves. Now the Father is in this room and, he, and the Holy Spirit is wanting through the Father, the Father is wanting to work in your hearts right now. He wants you to let go of some of the disappointments that you've had. What we, what we do is we want, we want closure, but we want, it's, it's really not closure, we want disclosure. We want God to explain why the angels let things happen, why these terrible things happen to us. We want disclosure. God wants closure. Okay, there are things that are, be, that are beyond your understanding right now. You can't handle everything that is going on around you. That's why it's hidden from you. Sometimes we just have to love God and trust God and live simply. Sometimes you just have to buy Mrs. Potato Head another can of hairspray. <laughs> because that's just the way it is. You don't have to have this closure. What is he talking about? You'll get it someday. What I'm telling you is, is that God has something for you, but he doesn't have to explain himself because it's much too, it's much too great for you. Yeah, you will. You'll take it. Okay, let's stand. Now, I want you all to pray because the reason why we only do one-nighters here is because we cannot find a venue that we are allowed to rent for a whole weekend. Can you imagine that? We, we have not been able to find something to hold over a thousand people. Now, why would I want to get anything under 1,000 when we got 12 to 1,500 people that are waiting to get in? Okay, so we have struggled in prayer to get into this city. You've got to be kidding me. It's the same with Dallas. We fought for three years to get into Dallas because we, wanted, we needed a big venue. All right, so what is the resistance in this city? that I got to make a fuel stop to be able to talk to you on my way to California. It's almost like you have to trick the devils. Oh, we're just going to stop for fuel. Oh, there's a ballroom. Oh, boy. So all of you need to agree is touching this, that the Lord has his way with San Antonio. Amen. Amen. Okay. So that we come here and we, we spend a whole weekend. We have spent a whole weekend. We do an air show. We do the kids. We, we, we teach the Word of God. And we activate this, this body of believers here to do the works of Jesus. Okay. The Lord definitely wants you to start to dream again. So if you're not having dreams at night, or if you're having dreams that are not of God, this is for you, which is probably everybody. But you need to fulfill what the prophet Joel prophesied about, is that in the latter days, in these last days, that God's going to pour out His Spirit, and we're going to dream dreams and, and have visions, and we're going to prophesy, right? So the Lord wants you to release your heart to dream Amen. and to believe him. He wants to minister to you your value. He purchased you. So let's pray. 
You ready? Yeah. Oh, no, you're not. You're not. Because yeah. you're not bracing yourself. The 120 braced themselves. Because the place shook. There was a mighty rushing wind. There were tongues of fire. Oh, I don't believe in that tongue stuff. Well, you're about to believe in it. You're going to need a fire extinguisher when I'm done. Okay, tongues of fire. They were prophesying. It says that they appeared to be drunk. Peter says these are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. What would cause them to look drunk? They, they were inebriated with the power of God. All right, so you have to get ready for God to intervene in your life. I mean, certainly he needs to get into your checkbook right now. And he needs to get into your body and start messing with the evil agenda that has been placed on you. Come on now. Amen. You need a dream because God's going to show you according to Jesus, if you want to bring him into it. Jesus said that the spirit, when he comes, he's going to lead you into all truth. And he's going to remind you of things that I said. And he said also he's going to show you things to come. Well, don't you think he's going to show you about the evil agenda that's been planned against you? Yes. Don't you think that he can take you to your future and show you the business that you should have started 10 years ago? Yes. But it's okay because he's going to get you everything you need and you're going, to get, you're going to make up for it. He might show you that you need to start a cleanse and get rid of the metals in your body. Just in case some frequencies might be released and you start cooking like you're in the microwave. You might want to start killing mosquitoes every time you get a chance. You might not want to eat one cent burgers. Just backing out of the cave. We still on, they didn't kick us off, good. See, okay, the red light's still on, this is good. Right, see, the Spirit can show you the things that are hidden. He can show you what you need to do in your own life about your crazy relatives. I got a word from you, word for you from God. Don't answer your phone. Oh, no, no, no. We have people that are on the drama list. Comes up drama. Now, if you want drama, that's fine with you. All right? But you choose who you let into your life. Come on now. All right, you ready? All right. As the church, say it, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we proclaim that we are his body on the earth. And that Jesus Christ is our head. And, Jesus Christ is our head. and he has given us authority in his name. And by his blood, we exercise authority against the principalities and the powers. We trample on serpents and scorpions. And we overcome all the power of the enemy. And, we all the power of the enemy. and though we will see a thousand fall, and, and 10,000 at, right at our right hand, better brace, it shall not come near you. It shall not come near me. No evil disease shall come near me. completely decaffeinated. It wasn't even caffeinated. Do you feel that? That was the power of God. See, the power of God is authority as well. I'm coming down with a healing right now. I'm coming down with a healing. Say it, I'm coming down with a healing. The next time the devil talks to you, you should say, oh, not on my watch. You're not talking to me, are you? I'm serious. You're talking to me? I do. I tell him that. I tell him that. Not on my watch. You're not doing any of that stuff. Not on my watch. You talking to me? You got to be kidding. You're talking to me. Why would the devil want to talk to you? You have nothing in common. 
you guys all broke up. When you were born again, you divorced the world. You divorced the prince of the power of the air. Paul said you used to obey him without resistance, it says. That prince of the power of the air. You had no resistance, it says. But he said now. You've been transferred or translated over into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of life. He said that now we have authority and we don't do his bidding. Chris. Did he go to the airport? Oh. Chris, come on now. If you can stand up here. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your glory. Your glory is your manifest presence. And Father, we decree and we declare in the Spirit right now that Your glory will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, Lord. Lord, we are after habitation. Lord, in our family, everywhere we go, Lord, we are crying out for habitation, God. Lord, you are calling us to be a sign and a wonder to this dying world. Lord, we pray for souls right now. Lord, we will not give up on our family. We will not give up on our friends. We cry out for souls right now, Lord. Our family shall be saved in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Texas shall be saved in Jesus' name. We will not give up and we will not give in. We will press forward in the mighty name of Jesus with your holy fire, God. We are your burning ones, Lord. And we will give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. All right. Praise the Lord. So the atmosphere is so ready right now. All our hearts are ready to pray. Because I know, I've known this all night, there's people that are... I don't want to hear another, they don't, they're like so ready to receive Jesus. They're either online or you're in this room or in the sound of our voice. So it's so easy. Jesus has already died for us. His blood's already been shed. So we're just going to pray. Most of us are saved, born again already. But we're going to pray together so that those who are wanting, our brothers and sisters are going to get born again tonight. So let's pray right now, okay? So this is for anybody who you want to be born again or you want to make sure you're born again. So we're just going to just pray after me and say, Father, Father thank, you for Jesus. thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I confess that you are the Savior and I ask you to come into my heart I want to be born again. I want to live with you forever for eternity. I confess the sin of rejecting you. And I receive you now as my Savior. Thank you for taking me and loving me. And now help me, Lord. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit and fire. And help me walk out all my days for you. Amen in Jesus' name. And just raise your hand. Let's just raise our hand. And just say thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
Lord, we just pray for every person that prayed that prayer. We agree with them, Lord, and let them ful fulfill their destiny in Jesus' name. Thank you guys for praying. And pa um, Pastor Simmons has something he wants to share with you. Did you receive this evening? Yes. Isn't that the most precious yes. anointing? What Kevin has to offer that he brought back from heaven, I'm going to tell you this. I've never seen somebody that was so kind and yet so filled with the power of God. And this evening, he has come here to impart to us. I've been in Texas for 21 years. My mom was born in West Texas. And I'm telling you, Texas has a special place in God's heart. And I'm here to tell you, we need to take our state back. And that's what we prayed out tonight. That's what happened. And when this begins to turn, you need to understand that's only the beginning. We are going to take our place in the body of Christ in humility. That means humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God and letting him exalt us. This is the season and this is the time where God is raising up his body. Amen. And we need to do it his way. Amen. His way. Say his way. his way. That's where our heart is. That's what Dr. Kevin is doing. How many of you pray with, with uh, Dr. Kathy on her, her little blog on her YouTube channel? I am telling you this. If you don't do it, please do. Go out there and find them and pray. She gives simple instructions and then she just prays. And I'm telling you, the power of God is so strong and it's so sweet and it'll take you to a place that you've never been before. So I just wanna put that plug in. Be sure that you pick that up because these are all tools that are for you. Now, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for allowing Jesus to move. I want to thank you for using your anointing. You, you have to understand this. If you don't come and bring your portion, Kevin can't bring his portion. Each one of us has a responsibility to come into these and believe. And we're going to believe that this next few, we're not going to say how long, we're going to have a spirit school in San Antonio, Texas. I had several people ask me before the service, they said, how come we don't have a spirit school? And I said, we've been trying. And so guess what? It's going to happen. Hallelujah. Let me pray with you and you can be dismissed. Thank you so much for coming. Father, we do thank you for tonight. We thank you for the precious word that came forth from Dr. Kevin. Lord, we thank you that you are teaching us how to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, which if we heard correctly, it's learning how to submit to others, how to humble ourselves unto others, how to help others, how to promote others. Lord God, we are willing to learn what you have for us. And therefore, Lord God, we choose this night to be obedient to the word that we heard and to walk out that which you have determined. Lord, I pray for everyone in this room, everyone that is watching on YouTube, those watching that will be watching on Facebook, the reels. Lord, I thank you that there is a truth that is imparted from San Antonio, Texas, that changes this world forever. And we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.